Hey brothers, hey sisters, shalom. This is Adam from the Parable of the Vineyard YouTube channel. I pray you are doing well, and I pray that your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit is focused on the return of Jesus Christ, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And all praise to Him. All praise to Him for even giving us the wisdom to discern these things. And today I want to produce. I want to go over that video about all the supposed dates that this has happened which i do believe is important because if this sign has happened numerous times before it, it loses its luster it's not as it's not as significant and you know it does cast would it would cast some doubt if um you know whether this is the sign or not wanted to finish this video sooner than i did now but the, uh, the Holy Ghost certainly led uh, myself and my brother Brad from Revelation 12 Daily to focus on the Revelation 12 and 5 Minutes video, which I hope does help someone out there, um, whether it be a non-believer, to maybe say, hey, this is something tangible, this is something real that the, Bob the Bible prophesied about 2,000 years ago, and it's literally going to be aligned perfectly as the Bible states, maybe I should look into this Bible thing, you know, or maybe I should look into Jesus, uh, maybe this is the time. You know, even if it just reaches one person, you know, praise God and, and all that time and effort was worth it. Or maybe the lukewarm that didn't look at this sign before or hadn't seen it before and says, hey, maybe I should look into this further. And um, again, anybody that uh, is new to this channel, um, you know, please check out uh, some of the more informative channels like uh, Scotty Clark and uh, his ER ERF Ministries and uh, Jaco Prinsloo at uh, God's Roadmap to the End, which... I believe are probably the two best sources of information on this but uh, again uh, the if you haven't seen it yet the Revelation 12 and 5 minutes video please watch that uh, it's a quick easy shareable message to just give someone the basics and uh, you know if they want to mock and scoff which there's plenty of those comments already fine no big deal um, but uh, hopefully our Brad and I our uh, intent was to at least open the eyes for someone to say hey you know maybe I should look into this a little bit further so any case uh, my, my again, uh, I digress. The uh, reason this video is a little delayed is because I wanted to focus on finishing that. So in the last video, I, I had asked you guys to, uh, specifically the, the mockers and naysayers, to give me all the dates you have. Unfortunately, that video just, uh, that chat just came into a, uh, you know, a back and forth conversation. I really didn't get any dates, so um, I had to rely on what uh, some websites had written up, and I had uh, included some screenshots of the supposed dates, and uh, there was about five or six of them. So we're going to be going through each one, and what I'm going to be doing is uh, showing the supposed alignment. We're going to back up nine months, and we're going to uh, go forward and see if, uh, if there is a pregnancy, because that's a major part of this. That's a huge part of this, and that's honestly what makes these uh, this September 23rd, 2017 alignment so specific. You know, we we were created by a God of perfection. You know, so if this sign is supposed to be this sign, it has to be perfect. All phases of the sign have to be met. You know, which is the moon at her feet, clothed in the sun. Excuse me, clothed in the sun, moon at her feet, a crown of twelve stars above her head, and you'll see a couple of these alignments. You know, they have twelve stars, but they're all over the place. There's no order to it. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the 23rd alignment first, show you the perfection of that. Then we're going to go through all the supposed dates, and we're going to we're going to finish up again and uh, going over the perfection of the alignment of the 23rd of this year and some of the differences but again all phases have to be met in order for this to be the sign because you know this is going to be the biggest event uh, of our generation or it's going to be nothing you know and, and that's what i want to solidify here is that this is different than all the supposedly other alignments and unfortunately a lot of the big name pastors that have dismissed this sign the first thing they do is say oh it's not rare you know or, or they'll make fun of us and saying by saying that we're pulling the rare card and that's why this has to be you know it has to be it well it is rare and i want to show you that today so again i was hoping for multiple dates uh, of this supposed fulfillment but uh, I just we just got a lot of bantering back and forth. But uh, so, any case, uh, we're gonna go over all those here, and uh, we're gonna go over them and see uh, if um, if each supposed date meets all the criteria. Which is again, 
uh, clothed in the sun. This is the, the constellation Virgo, which is could be the only um, of the 12 constellations that is the woman. Uh, clothed in the sun, moon beneath her feet, crown of 12 stars above her head, and the most intricate part is that, you know, the uh, the pregnancy. You know, is there, a, is there a pregnancy period? So we will find out. All right, so what we're, where we're at now is roughly nine months before the sign starts. And what we're going to do is we're going to watch Jupiter enter the womb section of Virgo and uh, make sure it stays in for a pregnancy period. So, and, and again, that's what you'll see with some of these other supposed alignments is, um, you know, Jupiter does not really stay in the womb for nine months, let alone a few months on several of them. Uh, and you'll see here coming up shortly, this is where a lot of people say that Jupiter exits the womb. But, um, you know, we're going off of these lines on Stellarium. And it, if you took those lines off, it would absolutely look like it stays in the womb section. Right there is what everybody talks about. Not everybody, but a few people talk about how it uh, exits. But I, I don't think so. You'll see on other ones where it definitely exits. You know, it almost like crawls up the, the arm. But here the sun is coming. You'll see the three wandering stars, Mercury, Mars, and Venus coming. And then, the as you saw, Jupiter exits the womb. Boom. There it is right there. And this is perfection. You know, if you look at... Uh, if you look at the moon beneath your feet. But look at the uh, look at the three planets. I mean, that's aligned perfectly. Clothed in the sun, moon beneath your feet. Crown of 12 stars above her head. Nine from Leo. Three plus the three wandering planets. And then, of course, Jupiter... Which has exited the um, uh, the burning canal, and uh, which signifies the the birth portion of this prophecy. So, what you saw with this is absolute perfection. You saw Jupiter staying within the womb section for nine months, uh, and then meanwhile, then the sun coming through, the uh, moon beneath her feet, and the crown of twelve stars above her head. And what I'm flipping to now is right at the culmination of the sign in. I'm going to leave a link for one of uh, Jayco's videos, and he does an excellent job of, of explaining how when this sign culminates, it's, uh, it signals the end of a day, the end of a new day, uh, the end of a week and a new week, uh, the end of a month and a new month, the end of a year, 5777 to 5778, and of course, the end of the Age of Grace and the beginning of, well, the next age. All right, so this is the first supposed date, which is 1056, September 14th. And uh, all right, so we've got the constellation Virgo clothed with the sun, the moon's beneath her feet. And let's see, look at the crown of 12 stars. So you've got the nine from Leo. Uh, you've got, well, Venus is on Regulus. And then you've got Mercury and Mars, uh, well, really not aligned and, and again I wanted to show you the September 23rd alignment because that is perfection this is pretty sloppy you've barely got Jupiter exiting the womb section but uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the birthing cycle and let's see how it looks all right so we're starting about nine months before Jupiter enters and this is where you see it's much different going up the arm way out of the womb section and then back in. Um, unfortunately, hardly even close to fulfilling a birth cycle. So, 1056, no go. All right, so the next is September 4th of 1293. So, a woman clothed with the sun. The moon is beneath her feet. And let's look at the crown of 12 stars. Again, you've got the nine from Leo. And then you've got Mercury, Uranus, Venus and Mars not really aligned very well um, but unfortunately you've got Jupiter still in the womb section so there is no birth but uh, just to keep everything equal let's take a look at the nine months prior and the birthing cycle all right so again we're we're gonna go nine months before we're gonna see what Jupiter does does not enter the womb in retrograde motion and it will it looks like it'll enter right before the sign aligns and uh, yeah unfortunately it does not fulfill the birth prophecy 1293 is a no-go 
All right, the next date is the year 1483, September 5th. And uh, we do have a woman clothed with the sun. The moon is beneath her feet. And do we have a crown of 12 stars? No. We've got the nine from Leo. We've got Venus above Regulus. You've got Mars and Mercury, actually, and then Saturn down below. Um, you've got Jupiter still in the womb section. So unfortunately, this is not looking very good. But again, to keep all things fair and equal, let's uh, let's take a look at the birthing cycle. All right. So again, we're nine months prior, and we're going to flip through. Jupiter enters. So 1827, uh, again we've got a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and the crown of 12 stars, you've got the 9 from Leo, you've got Mars there, and then Venus and Mercury is down there by the sun. Uh, not a real alignment, and then uh, as far as the pregnancy, you've got Jupiter that uh, has not exited the womb, but uh, once again, we're gonna, for all fairness, let's back up 9 months and let's take a look. All right, so we're starting out. Let's go back nine months. Jupiter enters. Retrograde motion. Jupiter exits. And again, what I want to point out here is how far it exits. And then comes through and, well, does not exit the birthing canal. So uh, for 1827, I'll also have to say no go. All right, and now we're going to move on to some of the more recent dates, 1999 and 2005. For 1999, I'm just going to show you a screenshot because there's really there's nothing to see. There's no um, Jupiter's not even here in the picture. There is no crown of 12 stars. The only thing you do have is clothed in the sun and moon at her feet, and that happens all the time. So that's the only part that's really that uh, happens every year is the the clothed in the sun and moon at her feet. But it's uh, the crown of 12 stars and the pregnancy, which are the two that are very specific. So, in any case, so I'm just going to show you 1999, the screenshot. Let's move to 2005. And in 2005, you, you do see Jupiter in the womb. It does stay in the womb and doesn't exit. Um, so here again, you've got a woman clothed with the sun, uh, the moon beneath her feet. And as far as the crown, you've got the nine stars from Leo. You've got Mercury there. And then you've got Venus down here. Uh, so there is no crown of 12 stars, but let's just go ahead and take a look at uh, the pregnancy just uh, just to be fair All right, so 2005 let's uh, let's go back nine months Say is the supposed exit, but yeah, Jupiter's still there, nothing. Um, so 1999, 2005, once again, no go. All right, so and then another most, the most recent is 2012, and unfortunately, the false prophetess known as Renee Moses, do not look her up, just don't. Um, she went, on, she went on a campaign saying that uh, this fulfillment was 2012. And uh, so let's take a look at it. You've got uh, the woman clothed with the sun, the moon beneath her feet, the crown of 12 stars, not even close. You've got the nine from Leo. You've got Mercury down on the arm of Virgo. You've got Saturn um, below. You've got Mars. So you don't even have 12 stars to make the crown. And uh, there is no birth uh, whatsoever. And uh, you had Saturn that kind of revolved around there. But no need to even video this one because it wasn't even close. So... It's unfortunate that this Revelation 12 sign was mishandled and misused by her and a lot of people aren't even looking at this because they feel they've already gone here before and it's a shame you know a lot of people are just completely closed-minded to this because people like uh, Renee M have mislabeled it uh, completely and you know uh, it is what it is unfortunately so I pray that uh, all brothers and sisters at least have an open heart and an open mind to at least uh, being open to this, but um, you know, it is what it is. So 2012 is a no-go as well. 
So we're going to get back to the precision of the 2017 alignment, but I want to pause real quick and go over one thing and show you some parallels that where there's so much doubt and so much, um, ah, this has all happened before kind of attitude. This happened 2,000 years ago at Jesus' first coming. But uh, here's the parallel. It's in the book of Acts, chapter 5. And this is when Peter and the apostles were taken before the high priest and, um, you know, th uh, threatened with jail again. So we're going to start at, uh, let's see, verse 27. This is uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. Now listen to this. And said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Theudas, boasting himself to be somebody, whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him, he perished also, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So the point I'm trying to make is that before Jesus even came, there was many people that boast themselves to be somebody, maybe the Christ. It doesn't explain too much in detail, but who knows? It doesn't explain it. Maybe that could have been of Satan. Satan could have, you know... Um, prop these men up and maybe showed some mighty works so that people were like oh this could be it and you know he drew big crowds and so you know when Jesus actually came it's possible that many people didn't believe it was him because they were saying in their hearts oh, here we go again I've already heard this you remember Thutis remember him yeah he said he was somebody oh yeah remember Judas of Galilee he said he was somebody so who's to say that this Jesus man is not doing the same thing so it's just some parallels you know and I could be wrong here but um, I do feel like there's some parallels here that I've talked about it in some previous videos I call it the cry wolf mentality to where you've had all these false prophecies beforehand you know and you know a lot of people were let down you know personally when um, when I saw the the blood moon tetrads and, and the eclipses happening on the feast days like many I was like whoa this has got to be it but now you know looking back that was just the fulfillment of the Joel prophecy in which the, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall be turned into blood before that great day uh, so, you know, we were let down that that wasn't it, and, you know, all the secular uh, prophecies, the false prophecies, the, um, the Mayan calendar, the 2012, the Y2K, uh, the 1988 Reagan, um, and, you know, and the, of course, the, you know, most recently the Harold Camping deal. So a lot of people are like, oh, I mean, I can't tell you how many comments I see that's like, oh, here we go again, another date, another false prophecy. So people are just like, ah, oh, we've heard this before, it's not happening. So I, I don't know about you, brother and sister, but I see some parallels in that story with the book of Acts when Gam Gamaliel was explaining it, how, you know, men before Jesus came and said they were someone great and drew people away. And, and so it kind of had that cry wolf mentality where people are like, oh yeah, here we go again. So I don't know. I could be wrong on this, but um, who knows? I think we do see some parallels on the, uh, the, the automatic disbelief because people are of the mentality that, okay, everyone else has been wrong, so you must be wrong too. And unfortunately, they just close their, completely close their mind and their heart to even just even listening to the, uh, the evidence at hand. And unfortunately, I think they're missing out on a huge blessing to, um, to really 
to see the the coming of our Lord because I myself and other um, other brothers that have been researching this day and night have how really have a hard time disproving this truly so I'm gonna part ways on this video with one last video recording from the beginning of the uh, beginning of Jupiter entering the womb and again it, it going through for nine months roughly 42 weeks a normal pregnancy and some people will say it exits the womb I say it does not you can see a clear difference from hopefully by now you can see a clear difference from Jupiter actually ent exiting the womb going up the arm and all these other supposed dates where it didn't stay anywhere near the womb where this one it absolutely does um, and again if you can imagine a pregnant woman it's uh, it, it's you know it's got more of a curve than a straight line but neither here nor there it actually does stay within the border the whole time in my opinion and um, it does show the absolute precision of this sign and at the end of this I'm going to show a couple close-ups of how precise uh, Mercury, Venus, and Mars are forming the 12 star crown above her head and again completely different than all the other screenshots and uh, uh, video shots that we've seen of the supposed crowns. This is 100% precise uh, and leave it to our God, the creator of heaven and earth to make a complete precision of this, uh, of this alignment and again I don't know how I can disprove this. I've tried. I've, I've prayed about it. I said, you know, Father, take this from me. If this is this is not true, I certainly don't want to lead anybody astray. But, you know, the more and more I research, the more I can't disprove it. And the more I come even closer to this. And, and uh, as mentioned in several other videos, uh, I know of plenty of people that the realization of, of how real this sign is has gotten them so much closer in their walk with our Heavenly Creator and uh, absolute faith in Jesus Christ and knowing that that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to have faith, walk in faith and uh, 